The game starts with talking to the strange golden light. We got the mission to seek out every Pokemon for him. And after that, we will see him again. Shortly after, it shows itself to us as Arceus and sends us through a space-time rift into the past. We get picked up from Professor Leviton at the beach and he invites us into Team Galaxy, which is by the way, the past form of Team Galactic. Little strange if you ask me. Looks like this is a time where people are afraid of Pokemon and they mostly live separately. But of course, we are about to change that. Before we can join the Galaxy Team Survey Core, we get tested from its captain Silene. For the time we are here, we get the squatter to sleep and stuff like that. Professor Leviton gives us our first Pokemon and we can choose between Cyndaquil, Rowlet and Oshawott. To join the Zoe Core, we have to catch Bidoof, Shinx and Starly. While leaving the city for the first time, we met Volo. This is a character we will meet very often in the game. After catching the three Pokemon, we join Team Galaxy. For filling the Pokedex, we get experience and with enough experience, we rank up and get new recipes for better balls and stuff like that. Our first request as a member of the Survey Core is a request from Mai, a member of the Diamond Clan. Or rather, our friend Ray accepted the request and we are helping him. To be honest, this dude is a failure, like every close friend in any other Pokemon game. Before Mai tells us more about her request, we have to fight her. The Diamond Clan isn't using Pokeballs and they mostly have a partner they grew up with. Really cool if you ask me. We defeat her and for the first time there's a comparison between us and the legendary hero. We will be hearing this through the whole game multiple times. She tells us there's an alpha Pokemon upon Deirdre Heights which is making trouble. Alpha Pokemon are bigger and stronger versions of a normal Pokemon. We learn that there's a god in this game called Almighty Sinnoh. There are alpha Pokemon that still have a connection to this god and there are so called wardens that fulfill the needs of these Pokemon. After we have beaten up this Alpha Cricketune, we set up a second camp and we get visited by the Great Wydeer. After resting a bit, we hear two people arguing in front of the headquarters. It's Adaman from the Diamond Clan and Irida of the Pearl Clan. They are arguing about what is the right way to worship their god. We report to the commander and we get our next mission. This time we learn about a Pokemon which is out of control. It's Clever, a precious lord of the Pearl Clan. Our next mission is to find out more about Clever and the truth of his situation. He got hit by weird lightning and he's been acting weird ever since. After we made our way to the location of Clever, we meet his warden, Lian. He is not happy that we want to interfere, but after we defeat him in a fight, he helps us. He is telling us that Clever's favorite food could calm him down, but we can't get close enough to him because of his rampage. Leon is gathering his favorite food and we tell the professor what the problem is. The professor has this brilliant idea of putting the food into bags so we can throw it at the Pokemon from a safe distance. On the way back to Liam, we learn how to play this flute and from now on we can summon Wydeer to ride on him. Together with Liam, we form the balls and we are now ready to calm down Clever. In a very unusual way, we feed a frenzied Pokemon its favorite food and after we have hit him often enough, it calms down. Since the lightning came from the space-time rift, it's believed to be the power of Almighty Sinnoh. Team Pearl thanks us for helping them and our first lord is defeated. All over the game we get different type of blades. Volo tells us that those are fabled blades of old. On the first blade we got, it says where all creation was born, that is the being's place of origin. If we gather all of them, maybe we can decipher the scripts on them and may uncover something absolute amazing. We report to the commander that we calm down the frenzied lord. And after that, we met the next warden of the Diamond Clan, Arisu. We hear Arisu talking with the commander and we learn that there is another frenzied Pokemon. This time it is Ursa Luna. We get our next mission, which is to go to the Crimson Mirelands and study Ursa Luna. We go to the next area and the professor is telling us that this area is teeming with poison wielding Pokemon. For the next mission, we have to go to the Solar Sun Ruins. In the ruins, we met this lovely old lady. Her name is Calaba and she is a warden of the Pearl Clan. We met Volo again and he tells us about the stolen wall fragment. He tells us about Notorious Misfortune, which is a trio of bandits who have stolen the fragment. He tells us that he saw remains of a campfire near the Mirelands camp, so we go there and check it out and shortly after we get attacked by the trio. The three sisters telling us their names. The first is called Charm, the second is called Clover and the last and most youngest is called Coin. And after we beat Coin in a Pokemon fight, she gives us back the wall fragment and leaves. We go back to the old lady and gives her the fragment. Now that the wall is complete, we can read it and it says All lives touch other lives to create something anew and alive. Calabar tells us Ursa Luna has become enraged but it doesn't seem to be in any other frenzy. 
He will turn back to his normal state if we just give him some medicine. We follow Calabar up the mountain to fight Osa Luna. He is indeed not frenzied but enraged. So a normal Pokemon fight should calm him down. She plays the flute and summons him. After we defeated him, he calms down. We play the flute to show Osa Luna how it sounds. And from that point on, we can summon him. We go back to our commander and we learn that Liligant, Lady of the Ridge, is in a frenzy. And we learn Arisu of the Diamond Clan could somehow be involved in the situation with raging Ursa Luna. Ursa Luna should be able to sniff out Arisu wherever she's gone. So our next mission is to find her. With the help of Ursa Luna, we found her easily. She got chased by a Pokemon and sprained her ankle pretty bad. We learned that Ursa Luna only started acting weird after he got too close to Liligant and smelled her perfume. Arisu has also gathered all the ingredients to make the bombs. So next we can fight the frenzied Pokemon. After we throw enough of those bombs into her face, she calms down. As a thanks, we got another blade from her. We go back to the commander and tell him about our success. On the next day, we go with him to the Prelude beach. There are some people at the beach who just arrived here and they want to start to live in Jubilife village. Those people have heard that this region is inhabited of many powerful and frightening Pokemon. But they also hear that Galaxy Team knows a great deal about Pokemon and they use their mysterious powers to help Jubilife village grow. Commander Kamado tells them that it's mostly thanks to us. So what we did impacts the village and let it grow. We go back to the commander's office and met Irida there. We learn that there are no Pokemon nobles in the Cobalt Coastland, our next area. They did have a lot in the coastlands until a few years ago and Ratchety took him from them. He tells us lately they have reports of people seeing strange shadowy figures on the island the Lord used to call his home. So we get sent there to investigate those reports. Right as we were about to leave the village, we met Leon again. He tells us that Palina, the warden of the Cobalt Coast, is certainly in a bit of a situation over there. Because she is warden and she has no noble Pokemon. In the Cobalt Coastlands, the professor tells us that we have to cross the sea to reach Firesplit Island. We should talk to Isken, a warden of the Diamond Clan, if we want to cross the sea. We met Irida in front of the camp and we learned that the Warden Palina, which is also called Lina, won't raise a new lord or lady. They were both trying to become the leader of the Pearl Clan, but Irida won, nevertheless, the two are still good friends. She wants that we help Lina out to raise the Pokemon she looks after into a true heir to his father. In the end she tells us that we can't find Lina up on the headland. So next we meet our way up the hill to Lina. Our reputation precedes us and she knows right away who we are. We learned that the previous lord was swallowed by the waves. He lost his life helping his puppy who was dragged out to the open sea. We also learned that a smaller one here is the child of the previous lord, not a bigger one as you might expect. She tells us that no matter what the rest of the Pearl Clan says, she stays by this little one and let him enjoy his life. If we want to get to Firesweet Island, we need the help of a Pokemon known as Basque Legion. In order to get his help, we need to talk to his warden Iskan, which lives on Ipom Hill. As we were about to go to Iskan, we met Volo again. He tells us that we can gain more blades when we quell frenzied nobles and when a great Pokemon recognizes us as worthy of bearing. The way we've been collecting those blades reminds him of the ancient hero, the one that's said to have battled against Almighty Sinnoh. We also learned that there were 10 Pokemon that have followed the ancient hero and that their powers are supposed to have come from Almighty Sinnoh itself. So he asks himself why would they fight against Almighty Sinnoh along with the hero. After the talk with Volo, we can finally talk to Iskan. We tell him that we are here because we need the help of Basque Legion. We need his favorite snack to get him to the beach. Iskan tells us that his favorite food has to be flavored by Dusclops Dark Pulse. We come back with the Dusclops and use his attack on the food. With his favorite snack, we get him to the beach and give it to him. Looks like this was enough for him to let us ride him. After we played the flute, he opened his heart and learned well the sound of our playing. We get interrupted by the three sisters, Charm, Clover and Coin. They steal the wrong Crowlith because they thought the bigger one is the Lord. And they leave for a place miserably hot, so of course the Firesprit Islands. We followed them and after we arrived on Firesprit Islands, we met Iskan again. Together with him, we reached the top very easily. 
We fight against Clover and Coin. The young lord followed us and swam across the sea, even though he is terribly afraid of the water because he almost drowned as a child and lost his father. We hear something howling in the distance. And shortly after, the young lord evolves into Arcanine. Everyone is happy that we finally have a new lord, but that can't hold for long because Arcanine gets hit by a strange lightning out of the space-time rift. He is frenzied now and we have to calm him down. But first we have to make bombs of his favorite food, so we have to run away. Shortly after, Irita comes to save the day. Or rather she tells us that we can calm him down with his favorite food, which we already know, and Iskan saves the day. He always carries a little bit of Crowlight's food with him. We make those bombs together and now we are ready to fight Arcanine. We throw enough of those bombs into his face and he calms down. Now this island has finally a lord. We hear different Arcanine in the distance, looks like his feather always watched over him. And with that we have a beautiful ending for the first part. Like and subscribe, bye.